Hey there students, so today I am skipping ahead to lesson 13.5 uh, because we just talked about area yesterday, so we'll just keep on talking about area while we're talking about it. This is one of my favorite lessons to teach the, all year just because it's very practical in finding real world examples. So um, if you or your parents, uh, either for work or just for making improvements around the house, have built something, so like laid carpet, uh, laid concrete, put up sheetrock, painted walls, any of that sort of thing, uh, like countertops, cover, I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on, then they have used the exact same thing that we're talking about today. So maybe go and ask them and say, when was a time when we had to measure area and why didn't it go easy? Um, because so often, when, you know, when we're measuring area, we know that area is uh, to find the amount of space that something has, the amount of room that it takes up, then we multiply the base times the height to get an area that's in square units. Um, very often in life though, we're not measuring a perfect rectangle every single time. Many times things are not perfect rectangles, and so then we have to do some good old fashioned problem solving to figure out how to get there. So I'm gonna show you three examples from me where I've had to use area in my life and how it hasn't gone easy. Um, at, well, some are easier than others, uh, but I just wanna kinda of make you aware so we can start thinking about what are some real life applications of area. And again, I would encourage you to go ask your parents and say, when, when was the time we used area to measure something and how did it go? So I'm going to give an example of my garden from every year, my shower that I just built over Christmas break, and then um, sod that I did a few years ago. So garden. Um, there's a lot of things to think about. So this is a picture of my garden. This is kind of a before picture here on the left, and then this is an after picture. So it's kind of this nice long rectangle shape. Um, but an, a challenge to think about, I can find the perimeter or the area of my whole garden, you know, by multiplying the length you know, over here times the height over here, the base times the width, just multiplying one side times the other to get the area of my total garden. But if you look at it, it's not, I'm not planting the same thing for the whole garden. You can see I've got like a strawberry box over here, my corn went here, I think these are carrots over here, pumpkins back over here, onions and tomatoes over here. And so each one of those takes up its own square plot. So I have a big, rectangle area, but I also have lots of smaller rectangle areas, and all of those smaller rectangles equal the one big garden. So um, one of the challenges of planting a garden or of managing you know, farmland is to figure out how many square feet or, or really big area acres you have and how you're going to divide that up among smaller amounts of, of, of what you're planting. So you know this, this corn one over here was a little bit longer, so we, we measured out the area for it. We measured out the area for each of these to kind of make little bunch of little squares to make up the big square because when you're going to buy stuff, you know, you don't have a, you don't have all the money in the world, so you, you don't want to buy not enough, so you have to go back to the store, but you don't want to buy so much that you've got tons left over. You want to buy just the right amount. Um, so with the garden, I had to think about the total area, but I also had to calculate this kind of an area of each of the smaller things I wanted to plant. This next one was a doozy. I've already told you guys about the shower project. But this one had a ton of area involved with it. So behind this shower, so okay, so we can think about this shower first off. It's not one rectangle, it's two rectangles. There's this rectangle over here, and then there is this rectangle over here. So right off the bat, there's not only one rectangle, but there's two rectangles, but there's lots of different places area came into play. So behind these tiles is, is what's called cement backing, and it's basically like sheetrock, but for places that get wet so they don't get moldy and stuff. So I had to measure the area of each of these two spots, and I had to cut these big cement boards and lay it out. Um, that actually wasn't too hard, because uh, it was pretty much area, but you know where the water, where the uh, you know faucet is, I had to measure the area of that I wanted to cut out, and then I had to find exactly where it was, and that can get tricky, but the cement backing wasn't too bad. Um, but this, these next two, so this stripe you see across here, and then the number of tiles, that was a tricky one to measure because, again, uh, I was at Home Depot. I didn't want to buy not enough tiles, so I had to go back, but I didn't want to buy a ton, so I had lots of extras. 
So what I had to do is I figured out, okay, each tile was, I think it was three by five. Eh, I think it's, uh, no, I think they're two by six. Each tile was two inches tall and six inches long. So I knew that the uh, that each tile was 12 square inches, right? Two inches tall, six inches long. And then I, so what I did is I had to figure out, I measured the total area of this side and the total area of that side. So I had to figure out, okay, how much area is there all together? And then I figured out, okay, one tile is 12 square inches. So I divided the total area by the amount of one tile to figure out how many tiles I would need. And I can't remember, it was like three and a half or four boxes, but I actually got pretty dang close. And I bought some extras because you're gonna cut a tile the wrong size, you're, you're gonna bust it when you cut it. Uh, this little thing took some extra tiles. So, you know, I, I, I bought a few extra tiles, but I came out with only having like 10 extra. I was really impressed with myself, but that was just good old fashioned math. The next thing where I used area that was really kind of a pain was this uh, inset. My wife is fancy, so she calls it a niche. But this inset here was was really tricky um, because first off, I had to cut out I had to cut out the cement backing and then sort of you know measure the area of that. But then I had to fill this area with lots of little tiles, and so kind of figuring out how this pattern would work in the bigger pattern and the area of that small one. It was kind of tricky, um, but the shower involved lots and lots of math because, you know, I had lots of different area to it. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, the next one is sod. So sod is like grass that you can buy pre-made and then you, you lay it down and it comes on pallets. So this is a picture of my backyard. This was in May or June of 2017 that we laid this sod. And so again, sod is not cheap uh luckily you know we kind of know a guy who knows a guy that we were able to get some some sod at a pretty good price but um you know how do you know how much sod you're going to need because each sod comes in you know a, a strip that's you know i don't know 10 square feet or something it's a couple feet long by a couple feet tall and so how are you going to figure out how much sod you need for your yard and so what I did, and my backyard, you can see it kind of has this like um, pergola pavilion area over here to sit, but then it's kind of a giant U shape. So it's not a friendly rectangle at all. So what I did is I had to break down my whole yard into little smaller rectangles. So I took this and this, this strip kind of goes further up. So I kind of made this a giant rectangle and then I made this a rectangle and then I made this little part a smaller rectangle, and then this part down here kind of a diagonal rectangle, and then this part over here you can't really see a big longer rectangle. So what I did is I kind of broke my yard into smaller rectangular chunks, and um, you know measured how much um, how much sod it would be, and then uh, and then we ordered it. And wouldn't you know, I actually ended up a little bit short on this one. I was a little disappointed that. Um, we didn't quite get enough that we needed. And I even thought I was, I was compensating. So somewhere I did some math wrong where I didn't actually plan enough. And then so back here by this tree, it doesn't actually look way good yet. We might get some more sod this year. But those are real three real life examples for me of how I've used area and had to problem solve with area when it, was, when it wasn't nice and neat to um, solve how to do area in my life. So we're going to do three quick examples to kind of uh, see what this might look like for you when you're doing problems um, on your own. So this one says that a landscaper is laying grass for a rectangular playground. The grass will cover the whole playground except for a square mill sandbox. The diagram shows the playground and the sandbox. How many square yards of grass will the landscaper use? So if we take a look at this, so this whole green area is going to be the playground and it's going to have grass on it. And then you have this sandbox that's not going to have grass on it. You're not going to lay grass over the top of a sandbox. So what we've got to figure out is how many square yards of grass the uh, landscaper is going to use. So let's think through this problem a little bit. So we have the playground area. The playground has grass. And that's really rectangle one. Right, rectangle one is the playground and the playground has grass. And then within this, I have a smaller, and it's actually not a rectangle, it's a square. It tells me so, that's a square sandbox. And then I have a square, or square one, and that is the sandbox. 
and the sandbox is going to have sand. So what I have to figure out is how much grass that the landscaper is going to need. Well, if I put, this is kind of how I like to think through it. If I'm putting a sandbox here in the middle of the playground, is the landscaper going to need more grass for the playground or less grass than if the landscaper was just to this whole area? the landscaper is going to need less grass because that sandbox is taking up space that would otherwise be used for the grass. So kind of what I need to think about here is what I'm working towards is area of the grass minus or subtract the area of the sandbox. So what that will effectively do for me is that's going to give me the area of all the green. It's going to tell me how much green space sod grass needs to go on here to cover everything except for this six by six area that will be the sandbox. So that's kind of how I need to think about it. So step one would be to find the area of the playground. And so uh, that one would be 25 times 15. And if you're at home, you'll need to get out some a paper and pencil and multiply that. But 25 times 15 is 375. So 375, um, and let's see, it's yards, and then that needs to be yards squared. So I'm going to put my little superscript in there, my exponent, yard squared. Okay. So now I need to find, oops, step two. We'll go back to, so step two is I need to find the area of the sandbox. So to do that, I would do six is the base, and then one of the sides is going to be six. So it's going to be six times six, and that equals 36 yards squared. Or we'll just say square yards. I'm not having to deal with this with the exponent too. So if you remember our overall way of thinking about it, the area of the sorry, I probably should change that to playground. The area of the playground minus the area of sandbox is going to be the total amount of grass. So my next step or step three. What step three is going to be is I just subtract those two. So st step three is going to be area of the playground, subtract the area of the sandbox, and that's going to equal the total amount of grass. So that would be 375 is the total area of the playground, and then 36 is the area of the sandbox. So to figure out how much grass is going to have to go around the sandbox to fill the whole playground area, I would do 375 minus uh, 36, which equals 339, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 339. And then this is in square yards, or square yards. So that's how I did that one, is I just figured out the area of the larger rectangle because I need to figure out the whole playground. And then the sandbox is going to be taking out grass. It's not going to be adding more grass, so I need to subtract. So at area of the playground, subtract the area of the sandbox, and that got me 339 square yards. So now they know exactly how much grass to lay. Let's try another one. So this one, Zach, uh, and it's, uh, we could say it's, uh, you know, either Zach Jackson or Zach Bass if we wanted to, even though the spellings might not quite line up. Zach is laying a rectangular brick patio for a new museum. Brick will cover the whole patio except for a rectangular fountain as shown in the diagram. How many square meters of brick does Zach need? So Zach, he's laying like a, a brick patio or a brick area in his, in his backyard. Um, oh, it's for a new museum, actually. So this must be at his job. So he's going to do like a brick area, and it's going to have a fountain off to the side. So um, we need to think of this whole area is going to be brick, except for this little chunk here. Now to have this 5 meter by 2 meter fountain, is he going to need more bricks 
is putting the fountain in going to have him add bricks? Or is because he's putting a fountain in there going to make him use less bricks? Well, because it's taking up this spot, it's taking up space, it's going to have him use less bricks. So again, the idea here is going to be, well, we first we're going to have to find the area of the brick patio. And then we're going to find the area of the fountain. And that's going to give us the num how much bricks he needs. So step one is the area of the brick patio. So that would be 20 meters on one side times 18 meters on the other side. So that would be 20 times 18. Now we should be really good at multiplying with numbers that have zero on it because multiplying 18 times 20 is the same thing as multiplying by 18 times two tens. So I know that 18 times two is 36 and I just have to add that zero back on there. So the area of the brick patio is 30 square meters. Step two is going to be the area of the fountain. And this fountain is five meters by two meters. And so that's going to equal 10 meters. So I know that the fountain is going to take up 10 meters of this total patio space. So to fix, so step three is going to be to subtract the area of the brick patio minus the area of the fountain to figure out the total amount of bricks that are going to fill this space, everything except for the fountain. So that is going to be 360 minus 10, and that equals 350 square meters. So again, to figure out the area around the fountain, I figured out the area of the whole patio and then subtracted the area of the fountain. Let's try one more. Lila is wallpapering one uh, wall of her bedroom. Uh, she will cover the whole wall except for the doorway. How many square feet of wall does Lila need to cover? So again, while we're thinking about this, there's a whole wall right here. And everything on the wall is going to be covered except for the door. So is because there a door there, is it going to be making Lila add wallpaper? Or is she going to use less wallpaper because of the door? She's going to use less wallpaper because there's a door there. So my thinking process for this one is I'm going to have to figure out the area of the wall. And I'm going to have to subtract the area of the door. And that's going to tell me um, how much wallpaper Lila needs. Because I'm going to wallpaper everything around the door. So step one is going to be figure out the area of the wall, which would be 12 times eight. I got those numbers because there's 12 feet on the base here and then eight feet on the height. And 12 times eight is 96, and that is feet squared, or square feet, you can call it either one. And then step two is going to be the area of the door. So this door is three feet wide, and this door is also seven feet tall. That's going to be three feet times seven feet, and that equals 21 feet square feet. So to figure out how much area there is on this whole wall except for the area of the door, I would just I would do step three, which is going to be figuring out my final answer. So that would be area of the wall, which is 96, minus the area of the door, which is 21, and that equals 75. So the air, how much wallpaper Lila is going to need is 75 square feet. So now when she goes to the store, she knows exactly how much wallpaper to buy. Thank you so much for watching. I know this one went a little bit longer, but I hope showing you these real life examples of when I used area has helped you seeing that, yeah, area actually is really big deal and it's used it well and it's used very, very often in real life. So go and ask your family when they've used area for a home project or for work or something else. And uh, good luck on your math. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.